basic thing there is no coalescence between the ball and the pad. Uh, all these names are there, head and pillow, head on pillow, foot and mat, and all that kind of thing. It's not new. It has been seen in the tin lead as well. But with the lead free, it's just becoming a little more common because we are dealing with a higher temperature, we are dealing with more oxidation. And, you know, those things, and also with a higher temperature, there's more warpage. So it's a serious defect and it can escape the functional test and so on. So I mentioned a little uh, uh, earlier about this green piece and what the, some of these companies started doing and washing the BGA and that made the problem worse because they didn't want any halogen on, the, uh, on these products. So major causes bringing those things in three different buckets, organizing the you know, other thing, design, the package warpage, you know, dynamic warpage. There's static warpage and dynamic warpage. The static warpage is not, like it could be flat at room temperature. But when you're going in the oven, then it starts warping, and depending on what it is. Incoming materials could be the package ball composition. Some balls have oxidation inhibitors. Could be paste, like what kind of activators you have. Process could be ramped to soak profile, reduce paste volume, could excessive oxidation. And uh, so ramp to soak profile is when you go up, ramp it, and then soak for too long, it tends to oxidize while you're doing the reflow, and that will cause the problem as well. So, the there are some things you can do about this. One is the printing of the paste, because if you apply a lot more paste, you can compensate for some of it. So use the printer with the vacuum suction to clean the stencil. Use more paste volume, especially on the edges, because that's where the opening is going to happen. So if you apply more paste on the edges, you're going to minimize the problem. Dip the BJ in the flux before placement on the paste. Take the BJ, dip it in the flux, then place it on the paste. That seems to help. If your pick and place machine can do that. Change to flux in paste with higher and longer and multiple activators because these activators that go into the paste, they oxidize, they burn they, as they activate. So if you have two, three different kinds of fluxes, into that paste. So one will burn out, the other one is still there when you are at higher temperature. The next one is still there in the, and you have this longer uh, time that paste is active, and that will minimize the, the hidden pillow as well. So but these, these are custom paste. So you're actually combining the paste? You're combining, okay. in the paste you're combining two, three different types of fluxes, okay. and this is getting like a designer paste, okay. customized, okay. if you're having this. Paste cocktail. The paste yeah. cocktail. Okay. So in the paste, you don't have different paste, you have different fluxes. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, becomes. Uh, so that's what it is, <laughs> longer multiple activators, that when you, even when you go to the reflow, it's still there is some flux that has not been activated, it's still new. Uh, and you want to check the paste for oxidation characteristics. You print the paste on a glass and then put the ball on it, just a regular ball, uh, and, and then you reflow it. Or you print the paste on BGA ball itself and reflow and see whether the ball and the paste kind of stick together on a glass. So just to see whether this is susceptible to not sticking. So here's some mechanism of this. You can uh, have the uh, BGA that you place it on the paste and you increase the spacing, uh, the warpage happening. And then during cooling, this becomes still liquid, this is solid and then there is no coalescence. So that's the mechanism.